his father, Mark Mary, with Franciscan Friars of the Renewal recording, talking to you from uh, the South Bronx. And it's, it's a great privilege, it really is, to be a part of this, this Revive uh, initiative to offer a little bit of encouragement, a little bit of support, and then a little bit of guidance as we all try and figure out <laughs> what we should be doing here, here in, the, in the Bronx. Uh, you know, New York City has been referred to as sort of the, the hub the, the main point where, where the coronavirus is in, in the states and slowly but surely we're getting everything shut down, locked down, and I think uh, formally our, our quarantine is going to be beginning uh, in just about 24 hours. And for all of us, it's just, right, it's just, it's a, just an interesting time. So I'm just going to share a little bit uh, from the angle of, of prayer and from my own reflection on, on what's going on and what it is the Lord is inviting myself to do and, and the friars to do, and hopefully this is this can be helpful for you as, as pastors and, and parish staff as well. And I keep going back, and I'm not the only one who's, who's sort of interpreting or reflecting upon all of this in the lens of cloistered or monastic life, um, but, but I had this opportunity a few months ago to go down to Honduras where the friars we have we have a hospital there, and right in front of our hospital is a, um, a monastery of poor Clare nuns, so cloistered nun convent. Um, and and I had the opportunity because I was down there on this like little media initiative, and so we had a photographer, videographer traveling with us. And I thought, you know, these sisters don't ever have access to anything like this, so let's see if we can make available this photographer and and, and see if they, it could be helpful for them for vocation resources, things like that. And, and Whatever, gave gave a call, knocked on the door, talked to the mother superior, and so, like really beyond expectations, just like that, they they opened the doors the next day and invited us in. And the only people who get to come into this cloister are like who have permission are like the president of Honduras and the bishop of the diocese and 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 the maintenance man. So we got sort of the maintenance man privilege, and we went in there. And this mother superior was just like a genius and could have been a Hollywood producer and she just scheduled out basically gave us a taste of their entire day in three hours and so we prayed with them had holy hour with them or adoration with them saw where they saw where they ate saw where they did their manual labor saw where they played games uh, saw saw their cells and it was just it was really for me it was an incredible 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 experience just to kind of get an insight into this this life and Reflecting on it and reflecting on it and reflecting on it, there have been two points which I think really struck me and are very poignant for what's going on in the world today, especially those of us in ministry. First of all, I got to see their entire like world, their entire geographic, physical space, and it was not big. I mean, I think I could probably, from the front to the back, I could probably throw a baseball over it. Definitely like a lob wedge, no doubt about it. It's a small space. And one of the things that hit me was that, um, you know, they don't have to travel geographically or physically because of how deeply they're going interiorly. And, and the joy in their, on their faces and just the, the peace that they have, you can't, you can't fake it. And I've never experienced a more eloquent, or provocative witness to the depths and the reality of, of the internal journal, journey in the spiritual life. And so f for those of us getting quarantined, I don't know if that's your situation in your diocese, your location, um, but many of, you know, things are shutting down. And certainly for us, it's an invitation to get a taste again, to be renewed in the spiritual life, to pray, to make sure we we just we we remind we're reminded of we taste again the depths the goodness the beauty of the interior life and the life of prayer and the lord in many ways has invited us to be still and know that he is god and to slow down and let's let's take advantage of this opportunity and let's pray let's pray well and certainly let's take the, the time if you you have means to do so to encourage your faithful to encourage your parishioners to take this time um, and not to fall into the temptation of just sort of filling it with, with more TV or Netflix or games or something like that, but to make sure we, we take this opportunity to, when we can't travel physically, 
travel spiritually interiorly. And the second is this, and this is probably, this is really what I want to emphasize for this little source of encouragement is about 20 years ago, they, these poor Claire nuns, they set up their little convent in the middle of nowhere. It was just dirt roads and sort of spotty grass. And, and that was it. Now, 20 years later, so for example, when I was there, right next to their convent is an all boys orphanage. The other side, it's a girls orphanage. In front is a school which provides, uh, which serves those with very serious physical or mental handicaps. There's our hospital, which gives free care to the poorest of the poor in the name of Jesus and his church. And then just a little bit down the road are, is our own friary. It's an ap Catholic apostolic center, which, which serves the location in hundreds of different ways. There's a group of lay missionaries. And I can't help, and I think it's the most reasonable thing in the world, to think that all of these works of charity are the fruit of the interior life, the interior prayer, the interior sacrifices of these sisters. And it's one of our greatest struggles, certainly, and I'm sure it is for you, is feeling like we can't continue to minister to, to serve, to support, to encourage um, our spiritual children, those entrusted to us. But what these poor Claire nuns remind me of, and I believe to be absolutely 100% true, is that our prayer and our sacrifices and our fidelity to what we can do, it's going to be fruitful for those that God has entrusted to us. It's going to be really and truly spiritual fruitful. We're not in it alone. God is with us. God is Father. And He's caring for those who He's entrusted for us to care for as well. And so let's not give up faith and give up hope that we really, really, really still can serve and minister to um, our people through our lives of prayer. And just to finally conclude with this is, is Pope John Paul II reminds us that, the, that prayer united with sacrifice is the greatest force in human history. And a lot is shut down, but we still have access to prayer united with sacrifice. So let's make sure um, we keep praying, we keep surrendering to divine providence and the circumstances of our lives and keep our hearts wide open so that we can keep loving those that God has entrusted to us. It's a tough time. It's, you, it's a unique time. We're all trying to figure it out, but we're not trying to figure it out alone. The Lord is 100% with us. Um, let's grow in our fidelity to Him, our faithfulness to Him, our trust in Him. Let's go deep. Let's go deep in the interior life. And, but let's keep our hearts wide open so that we keep praying, making little sacrifices, little acts of surrender um, on behalf of of God's people. Thank you so much for all you're doing on the front lines. Happy to be in this journey. Glad you're on our team. Um, God is good and God is faithful. Amen. God bless y'all.